Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we're going to be discussing bowel obstructions with Paul. Now, before I go any further, if you have any questions for Paul or me, Larry Warren, Eric Clear Passage, put them in the chat and we'll get to them at the end of this live session. Paul, welcome down here in Florida from up you way up in, in Alaska now, I gather. That's correct. Greetings to everyone out there from Anchorage, Alaska. Thank you for your interest in this program, some bowel obstructions. I first want to say my message to everyone out there is if you are shackled by uh, uh, adhesions, take advantage of clear passage therapy. So if you have to leave early, that's my message to you. So let me tell you just a little bit about what my life was like before Clear Passage. I've spent over 40 years in the court system, um, working with various people and going to the jails and the prisons and, and talking to people and being in court. And while I was doing that, it struck me watching people who were accused of crimes and were shackled. They were shackled with metal handcuffs with chains around their arms, with chains around their legs, with a belly chain that came up to their stomach so that they couldn't twist their body. And it occurred to me that being shackled by adhesions is something that no one should ever have to spur. Wow, great analogy. The other, the, the other thought that occurred to me by virtue of Larry, is a straitjacket. So picture that person in handcuffs, in leg chains, um, in a belly chain. And then picture the person, because this particular person is maybe risky and dangerous, in a straitjacket, a straitjacket that's wrapped tightly around his upper body. He can't move his arms. It's squeezing his whole midsection. And he his freedom is restrained to an amazing degree. He has no life. And if you look at his face, there's fear in his face as he's walking around the jail or taken to court for proceedings. So picture those chains, that metal cutting into the person's flesh as being adhesions, adhesions that are caused primarily by prior surgeries. So for six, for the past six or seven years, I have been struggling with adhesions in my midsection. And these have caused 25 bowel obstructions and a dozen visits to the emergency room and two multi-day hospitalizations. My bowel obstructions were tormentingly unpredictable. For example, at first they were every three months. And then they I had two in one month. And then I had a two-year period where I didn't have any bowel obstructions. And I had started eating yogurt and I thought, okay, maybe there was something off in my gut and the yogurt corrected that. And now I don't have these obstructions again. I thought I was cured. They came back with a vengeance. I started having more obstructions and more obstructions. And I had thought originally it was because of food poisoning or just eating food that was too hard to because I did not have the main driver of adhesions, which is prior surgery. So I'm 61 years old this year. I have never had any surgery for anything. Furthermore, I have never had a medical condition that required me to take daily prescribed medications. I take two medications when I'm obstructing. Um, but I don't take any, any medications regularly. And so I was completely confused and did not understand why I was having these obstructions. Mm -hmm. I went to many, many health 
practitioners, including three gastroenterologists and a surgeon and body workers, naturopaths, um, masseuse therapists, probably two dozen health professionals, um, ultimate and radiologists and emergency room doctors. Ultimately, the gastrointestinal, I call them gastros because I can't pronounce it quite right. Ultimately, three gastros and my surgeon all concluded that even though I had no prior surgeries, I had abdominal adhesions, and they all urged me to get surgery for mm. I was very close to getting surgery, and I discovered clear passage by searching for a non-invasive, non-surgical, holistic, hands-on approach to resolving the problem of abdominal adhesions and up popped clear passage. Now I went through two phases with clear passage. So the first phase was, gee, I love the name. It looks really interesting, but I'm a little skeptical and a little dubious about this concept of hands feeling adhesions. And my surgeon was like, they can't, they can't, you can't feel an adhesion with your fingers. And so she really downplayed the the alternative that clear passage has pioneered. So that was phase one. Phase two was this year I had two obstructions, one in January, one in March, and they both required visits to the emergency room to resolve. And I became I get curious about getting some alternative treatment because I I just had a hesitancy about the surgery. I thought I should probably do that, but I just wasn't quite sure because I wanted to exhaust all of their options before resorting to that. Now, my bowel obstructions were terrible. They began with a pain, a band around my stomach that would ache. Um, then there would be a wave of nausea that overtook me. Then I would feel like I was getting really dizzy and sick. My skin would turn clammy and sweaty. I would turn gray. And then my mouth would salivate. And it was like, get yourself to the bathroom. And I would have the most violent vomiting that was primal. I characterize it as a screaming vomit. You would hear this howl of, ah, and it hurt so bad. And at first I thought, okay, it's food poisoning. You know, if you're sick from something you ate, throw up, feel her, you got it out. And so I would say, you're going to be okay. Just relax. This will pass. It didn't pass. I would keep vomiting and vomiting and vomiting. And I felt like I was going to into shock. And my wife would look at me and say, it's time to go to the hospital. So I go to the hospital and you know what happens after that. You get IV, you get some painkillers, they do a bunch of scans. And finally, after six to seven years of this, they wouldn't say really mm -hmm. the Haitian word, but the last couple radiologists said specifically, this is being caused on the likely basis of stomach adhesions because you can't see them. You don't know what, what is causing them. Um, it, and it was at that point where, okay, I'm gonna run out of luck going to the hospital and not getting cut open. So I have to get really serious about addressing this problem because the next time I go to the hospital, my doctor's on, my surgeon's on call. And she wants to open me up because she thinks by snipping and burning these adhesions off, I'm going to be better. But the data is I'm not going to be better. I'm going to likely be back with more surgery required to remove the new adhesions that have formed as a result of the surgery. And it's a downward spiral from there on out. And it's a spiral you can't recover from. So... My message to you is if you are shackled by adhesions, if you are in a straitjacket because of adhesions, get clear passage therapy. 
because you have nothing to lose and everything to gain by trying this. Because I just thought, oh, okay, I'm a little skeptical. I'm not sure. I think it. I'm, not, I'm just not sure. But how would I feel if I didn't try it and it would have worked? So let me I let am, me interrupt. May I interrupt sure. you for for just a second because. A couple of things that you mentioned, and thank you for the endorsement. We're not really asking you for an endorsement, I'm clearly. We're just wanting to know what you went through because it's such a terrible condition and so few people know about it. If you say, I had a bowel obstruction, they think, oh, you mean you had too much lasagna or something. So, you know, right. no, that's not it. The bowel obstruction, the Journal of the American Medical Association just came out association just came out with a study it is the second most common emergency surgery in the usa and incidentally fifth most common is adhesion removal it also bowel obstruction surgery it has the highest complication rate almost 50 percent 47 percent so a lot of those people what happens when they cut through so i think you had good intuition when they cut through, first of all, they have to see through the adhesions and they can't always. So sometimes they'll slip and have an enterotomy where they cut something they didn't mean to. Um, and um, that even though they're a brilliant surgeon trying to do their best. Um, but if a, when they do cut the bowel, if a little bit of that poo gets loose, a drop or two, and then they sew you back up. And three or four days later, you're going, you're in excruciating pain what happened? Well, bacteria got loose. It found itself in a warm, moist, dark environment, perfect place to grow. So it grows and it proliferates throughout the throughout the abdomen and pelvis. They have to cut you open again, pour antibiotics in there, leave it open often so that the wound can heal from the inside out and creates massive adhesion. So um, it's very kind your endorsements and, and i'm really not looking for endorsements i'm really looking for you to hear what was it like for you when you when you when you first called us because it's so often that people don't know what the heck bowel obstructions even are sure so when i called it was very very clear um clear passage does not accept everyone it was a very rigorous application process i admit all my lab reports and all my doctor's reports and did a very comprehensive history of my health problems. Um, everyone at Clear Passage was, was kind and courteous and patient, uh, answered all my questions, helped me get a lot of documents and, and submit them. Um, and... Oh, sorry. I don't know how that... Let me... Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and so um, the application process was uh, took quite a bit of time to get everything together, um, and then they uh, Clear Passage notified me that they felt that they could help me. They're going to accept you unless they feel like you can. They, they, their program can help you, um, and there are certain conditions that qualify you from um, being a client and a patient. Um, and what else did you want me to address, Larry? So what was it like when you first called? Did people know what the heck bowel obstructions even were? Oh, oh you mean call, talking to other people? No, yeah. when you first called Clear Passage, what was it like? Did, did, um, did the staff understand what the heck you were talking oh, about? Absolutely. Oh, the, the staff is amazing. They're completely um, educated and informed and compassionate about what you're going through, understand um, the, the pain and the trauma of, of, of obstructions, and they do everything they can to assist you in uh, working your way through the application process and um, hopefully getting accepted for treatment. Okay, okay. And then what was it like when you, when you first came and, and had, what, what, were you, what were your days like? Day one through, you came for five days, I think? I came for five days and I went to the St. Louis program and I had the most amazing connection with my two therapists. You know, sometimes there are people that you meet 
that you've never known before, they're complete strangers, but you feel like you've known them all your life, that um, you have a connection, an affinity, um, a feeling of comfortableness, and a feeling of trust. And it was, it, it was mo immediate when I met my two therapists, it was like, I really like these people. They are really, really, they're healers. I really felt like they were healers and that I would put my life in their hands. Um, I can't say enough. And that's a lot due to your training, Larry, because your training is really um, comprehensive and exhaustive. And uh, you, I've listened to all your therapist testimonies. They are all so impressive and so well qualified. Um, so yes, I I just connected immediately with my two therapists, and I'm in touch with them. To, that's the other thing is, you can call them after you're done. They say you let us know if you have any questions. You you call me if there's anything I can help you with. So you don't just go there and then you're done and you have no connection. They they call you to follow up. How are you doing? Do you have any questions? How's your home treatment going? Um, have you had any issues that we can help you with? You're not going to get that from anyone else. Um, so during the week, I mean, could you tell changes were going on in your body over the course of the week? Or how do you know that what, things helped? What I noticed is that I was really tight. I was really tight and I wasn't pliable in my stomach and that I had a lot of restricted range of motion. And what, what clear passage therapists do is they assess your whole body holistically, um, understanding the interconnectedness of all parts of your body, and not only your body, but your mind and spirit. They really address everything in a holistic manner. Um, and when they worked on me, I would say, oh, wow, I feel that. Is that something different? And oh, wow, is what you're feeling, is that my pulse that's coming through your fingers? And oh, my goodness, I had no idea that that was so tight. Um, and they would talk to you about, well, this is what's happening and this is what I'm feeling. And frankly, when I went to Clear Passage, I still had a doubt as to whether I had adhesions. And that's one of my main reasons for going because it was like, no one can see them, that you just kind of infer them by how organs move or glide or don't move or don't glide or are restricted. And both my therapists said, you have all the kinds of adhesions that we identify and treat. You have the microscopic bonds, you have the, um, the strands and the ropes you have the curtains and the sheets. You have the the balls of rubber bands. You have everything. And I was like, oh, my God. How did, how did I get those when I never had surgery? Where did those come from? I don't know the answer, but right. anyway. Right. Okay. And then, so since therapy, has, have, what, have you noticed any changes in your body? Other than yeah, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. To the hospital. Let me get to that. I, I was getting to that, but okay. I was blabbing too much about other things. That's so fine. I noticed yeah. that yeah. I was yeah. able to, I felt like I was standing up straighter. I felt that my posture was better. Uh -huh. I felt that my range of motion was better. I felt more relaxed. I felt like I, I just, I was walking felt easier to me. I felt more loose, I felt more limber. Um, I felt more confident. And those feelings were completely verified by a post-treatment assessment, which showed that I had, in 14 areas, I had an increase in the range of motion. Although, so the overall, there were 11 areas that remained pretty much the same, but there were 14 areas that I had increased range of motion. I had a 50% improvement in posture, and I also had a 50% improvement, and this, this kind of floored me, in facial symmetry. Um, it's like, mm. oh, so all these adhesions have not only affected my posture, but <laughs> my face. Uh, wow, okay, that's pretty amazing. 
it's a full well it's a full body system and and we frequently hear i can stand taller because when you think about it, you get adhered in your gut it pulls you forward and then you can stand up straight and when you try to stand up straight it creates more inflammation inside and your body goes oops i better send in some more cross links there because we've got some inflammation going on um and then it gets worse over time. It doesn't get better. Then your back and your neck start to hurt because they're fighting to keep you upright in space over time. And and you're right. It's a full body system. It's like this fascial sweater from the bottom of your feet, from the top of your head, very much like that, that gets runs in it, just like a sweater would get a run in it. So we're finding those areas that are so adhered those runs in your sweater and freeing them up layer by layer, sweater by sweater, kind of starting superficially near the skin and going deeper and deeper. Um, and then depending on your goals, because we only have 20 hours to work with you, but that's generally enough to get the job done, um, focusing on the additional areas that you may have mentioned that you'd like to, because you talked a little bit about goals and that that we covered did some other things that you weren't um that that in line with what you were hoping for and so we do kind of uh, tend to spread out a little bit as things are freeing up in that gut and we know and we're not so worried about you going back to the hospital right with another obstruction yeah right yeah let me see. We don't have any questions yet. So um, did did we teach you? Did we teach you things to go on or was it just kind of like you take your car in to get repaired and you drive away and it's done? No, my therapist gave me very, very valuable tools to use at home in two basic categories. The first category is um, when you're not obstructing, when you're healthy and you're not having any symptoms. Um, they give you tailored uh, exercises and stretches to increase the range of motion in the areas that need a, a, a larger amount of range of motion to keep your internals healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and the second part of that home treatment is to replicate the hands-on massage in your abdominal area. Um, so that you can continue to keep those strands of collagen separated and hopefully even um, make them less constricting. Um, the other area of, of expertise that you receive from the clinic, from clinical teachings, is what to do if you are obstructing. And so they give you, that your therapists give you very specific tools you can use at home if you are in the midst of an obstruction that will one prevent the obstruction which will in turn prevent the call the trip to the emergency room which will in turn prevent the possible surgery which will in turn prevent the renewal of adhesions coming from that surgery so i, I find that is really essential to keeping you healthy and to keeping you out of the hospital um, to really work and uh, work on those um, techniques when you are obstructing as well as the exercises to keep you stretched out when you're not obstructing. So did you learn more about obstructions and adhesions from us or your doctors or sort of an equal amount? Well, my surgeon was not, was skeptical about, I think I've mentioned, you can't feel adhesions with your hands. So she, you know, she did not encourage me. She really pressed me hard to get surgery, which of course, that's how she makes her, that's, her, that's what she knows. So um, my, I, I noticed a change though from the emergency room visits because the doctors there and the radiologists there really did seem to understand adhesions and how they cause obstructions, particularly recently when they came out and said, this looks like it's caused by adhesions. So 
those folks understood it. A, a lot of other doctors really don't get the piece of problems, a huge issue in the medical profession that they don't like to talk about because you don't want to say, well, we can do surgery, but you will probably be back with more issues caused by the adhesion. So that, you know, that's not a good message to give to the patients. That's right. That's right. We've had doctors tell us, well, surgery adhesions can't cause pain, but these are 2,000 pound of square inch ropes or curtains right. inside of you that are binding structures together or squeezing them. And right. to our mind, of it's, course, it's, it's a steel, steel, steel straight jacket of it. I loved your analogy of the shackles. Exactly. The... What was that, Larry? I loved your analogy of the shackles from all of your time dealing with courtroom criminals that were bound. In... Well, you know, I was just thinking about this presentation and it struck me just like a lightning bolt shackled by adhesions. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. yeah, right. That that picture just really resonates because that's and the fear. You're fearful daily. What's going to happen to me today? What it, what am I eat today that might cause an obstruction? What am I going to do if I go into an obstruction? Am I going to end up in the hospital? Are they are they going to find something that's going to require them to open me up and cut me open and operate and get surgery, which I don't want to ever do? Oh, no. So Clear Passage lets gives you an a non invasive holistic approach to addressing those adhesions. Um, to keep you out of the hospital and to avoid surgery. You know, and a bit of our, I don't know if you know our history on this, but we were treating my dear wife who developed massive adhesions from radiation therapy 30 years ago. We were treating her and trying to free things up for her and figure out how to do things, like you said, without surgery, without creating more adhesions. And we started opening women's blocked fallopian tubes, which are these tiny little structures that are designed to carry a single cell. When we went to the, uh, when this happened again and again, the chief of staff of the hospital, a gynecologist called us in, very skeptical. What is this about opening blocked fallopian tubes? And we showed him some charts and he said, my God, we need to do some research on this. Once we published, started publishing about opening blocked fallopian tubes, people, somebody like you so somebody who had had seven surgeries for adhesions and bowel obstructions called us and said you know they're about to do a whipple on me they're going to take out half my stomach and everything that adhesions can stick to can they're killing me can you do anything if you can open those little tubes can you open these bigger tubes and we said well don't know. I mean, it makes sense. We, we treat adhesions and we decrease those. So she came in and we helped her. Honestly, for us, it was a little scary treating in areas that no one else was treating in. No one else was opening blocked fallopian to that wasn't so scary. I mean, either they're going to open and somebody will have a baby or not. But then when we realized how life threatening bowel obstructions were, and all the complexities of everything that can go on in the abdomen, which is why we put you through all of that clearing to make sure that we were going to help and not hurt uh, further what, what you had going on. It's just been, we've been very cautious and very slow and steady and kind of brave, you know, to, to, to treat in areas where others um, haven't but but just our hearts went out to to people like you and so many hundreds now that have come to us with recurring bowel obstructions so is has is, for some people eating changes and for some people you know they tend to kind of stay on a soft food diet has has eating changed for you at all yeah i Clearly what you eat plays a role in obstructions. Um, I characterize my dietary issues as kind of walking a tightrope. And I say that because the food that is helpful, that is recommended for obstructions after you've had an obstruction is white 
processed food that's easy to digest. Um, unfortunately, it's not a good long-term diet. It's a healthy diet. And the good healthy diet is whole foods that are not processed. Um, and that diet is healthy for blood sugar control. Um, whereas white processed foods such as white rice, saltines, white bread is not healthy for blood sugar control. And I'm one who has diabetes in the family, and so I'm vulnerable to that blood sugar issue. So it's always, well, gee, I really should have this, but, you know, there's a trade-off. So I, my, I've come down to eating smaller meals more times a day and to going with softer foods and more soups and then um, foods that are easier to digest and not as um, whole as I'd like to, them to be, but still healthy. So um, basically a lot of um, softer vegetables, soft nuts, fish, tofu, um, yogurt, some dairy, um, avocados, things like that, that are softer and easier to digest. So it, it's a real tightrope balance of what works for you, but smaller meals, smaller amounts spread out over the day. Some, somebody just wrote and said, yeah, processed foods easily to digest sucks. I want a salad. I know we do have a um, diet guide that kind of shows you where you can see where you are and it's a free diet guide. You can download it. And and if you want to test the waters and go a little bit further and push it, you can do that. Right. It tells you how to do that. You feel like that you is actually that down, you can do that, that. That's key is to find what you can tolerate. That's your basic repertoire. If you're adding anything new, make sure to do it in small amounts at first. So, for example, I had some cauliflower rice that I thought, OK, this is a vegetable and it's not white rice try that and I tried a little bit and I tolerated it fine but then I had another helping and it was probably too much and it was like okay that was a little too much I got to be a little more careful with the portions on that so we're trying to not create um plugs or corks in the in the system so the problem with with raw vegetables with salad Wendy is that the fibers stick together and they'll tend to create right. a, um, a cork so you can run them through a vegematic or something like that to suppose it so that the fibers aren't you don't get these long fibers sticking together um and of course if you cook them you have to kind of cook them southern you know get them a little bit soft so that you're not creating corks but um um, yeah, those immersion did. blenders are really helpful to break up and kind of soften. What um, is that? The immersion blender. It's a little uh -huh. blender that you can put in a pot. And it, it's Yeah, it's just called an immersion blender. It's a good tool to um, blend certain foods that may be right. too hard to digest in whole form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Wendy says, no one wants to drink a salad. <laughs> you right. Know, and then right. LOL right. behind it. And that, certainly I understand, but you want to live. And you have to, you're, unfortunately, you have to deal with what you, with what you have. But at least there are some answers that are going to keep you alive and then can still can keep you vibrant. Um, and, um, and you just... We got what we got and things change as we get older. I'm 75 now and God knows I have plenty of other things going on. I haven't had the bowel obstructions that a lot of our patients have, but um, um, you got to meet yourself where you are and recognize yep. where you are. Uh, but try that diet guide, uh, Wendy, and see if that doesn't help you a little bit. Yeah, well, I've actually looked at that. Sorry. Paul, it's been a real pleasure to to talk with you. Um, do you uh, what's your what's the prognosis looking like and feeling like for you? Has your life changed? Do you? I know. I don't know if you went through this, but a lot of people who have had obstruction after obstruction and know that surgery causes more adhesions 
walk around every morning and they look in the mirror and they think, is this the day I'm going to die? Is this the day I'm going to get thrown into a hospital and cut, maybe cut open, have IVs put in me? And But sometimes after retreat, what I hear is now I look in the mirror in the morning and I think, what do I want to do today? So it's a little, it's, so it, it relieves that feeling of an anvil over your head. Um, do do you, have you had any sort of feelings like that? Um, um, I just I just feel a lot more hope now because I have the tools to take care of my situation if I need to. Um, I remember Larry listening. I, I think my therapist, my clear patch therapist, told me this story about a woman who was a very high powered public speaker. And she was set for an, a presentation and she started to obstruct. And she said, um, I need about 15 minutes. Can we take a break? And she went back and practiced her uh, self treatment. And she resolved her obstruction, went back on stage, and gave her presentation. Now, having that ability and that tool at your disposal makes a huge difference in your life's outlook because I know I'm going to probably have other issues, but I also know that I've got a plan now. I know what I can do when something goes sideways. And that takes that whole fear part. You know, I'm, as I mentioned, the people in the, in the, the leg irons and the arm irons and the handcuffs and the straight jacket, they got this look of fear because they don't have freedom. They don't know what's going to happen to them and they're haunted and life is fun. But when you take away those iron metal restrictions in that straitjacket and you have ways to address your situation and plan, it's a whole different outlook. So, was that the correct? story that i've said very <laughs> i've not heard that one but it certainly sounds familiar it sounds reasonable yeah 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 it's that or similar stories that i hear yeah just you know i just feel like i have my life back i just feel like now i can do things now i can go across town now i can go travel with my husband i don't i feel like if something happens and i'm in another state or even another country i know what to do you know, and if nothing else, I'm going to call you. If I'm in Morocco, I'm going to call you and say, what is that? You know, I'm doing this. And no, this. my therapist said, you call me if you got issues. Let me, you know, give me a call. I will help. Yeah. So you, you won't get that from the person. No, I'm person. sorry. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. That. I mean, it's nice. Trying to avoid nice. these endorsements. It's, it's fun to, it feels wonderful to save lives and to give people back their lives. And I thank you so much for coming onto the Facebook um, with me and with us. And we really appreciate it. Is there anything else that, that you wanted to say? Well, you know, I'm aware that an endorsement isn't really appropriate, so I probably should. I mean, I do have an endorsement with that I make, but I don't want to do that, Larry, if that's not in your on your agenda for this because i can well, refrain I, I, i'm not this isn't this isn't a sales venue call but if there's something that specific that that you feel for other people that are undergoing recurring bowel obstructions that you feel may help save their life or give them back their lives you certainly are invited to say that well i would definitely say if you are shackled by adhesions you have everything to gain and nothing to lose by trying the clear passage therapies they have 30 years of over 30 years of specialized expertise that focuses on reducing or eliminating abdominal adhesions that cause obstructions it's a science-based, hands-on, in-depth, holistic, meticulously documented um, clinical approach that addresses 
and measures the amount of restrictions and adhesions you have in your body. Um, it addresses your whole system, including your mind and your spirit. Um, it's supported by medical articles in respected journals by the likes of Stanford and Harvard and other um, well reputable institutions. Um, they give you the tools, as I've explained, to allow you to continue your treatment at home when you're not obstructing and more importantly, what to do to avoid going to the hospital, to avoid surgery if you are obstructing. Um, it really, if it's if it's a last resort, it really is worth it to try it because you may always, like I did, I, I was like, well, I may always wonder, this might have helped me. It, it's definitely helped me. I have not had to go to the hospital since my treatment in May. Um, the other recommendation I would have is do your own research, listen to the testimonials, and find the best fit for therapists. They all, all, all um, Larry's therapists put out uh, testimonials about who they are and their approach. You can listen to them. And I call the St. Louis office and talk to the main therapist. And that was really, really helpful um, in talking to her and deciding that I'm gonna to go to the place that has the best therapist for my situation. And I'm not gonna to go to the place that would, which I initially did. I wanna to go to California because I have a friend down there that I can visit. It should, it should not be a vacation place that's the main priority. It should be, this is a therapist that I think is gonna be the best fit for me. And that's what I'm gonna um, decide on the basis of. Um, it is a fight for your life. And you should treat it that way. You should apply yourself seriously. I mean, that means being punctual, showing up on time, sleeping right, following the instructions for what you do afterwards, and um, just being serious about it. And my time went so fast for that week, and I look forward to every day of treatment, and I miss them <laughs> afterwards. I miss the therapist afterwards, and I still am in you know regular contact with them just uh, saying hi and how are you doing? And they call me up and check on how are you doing? You, you're doing okay. So um, that's my, <laughs> my recommendation and thank you for listening. Appreciate it. Oh, words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Larry, if you have a second, I'd like to talk about it first. Okay, on, on this Facebook or afterwards? Um, on Facebook, if we're, if we're off air. Um, we'll go ahead and, and get off air, and then I can give you a jingle bag. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you, everyone, for for uh, attending. And, and do do call. I mean, we're not going to push you into anything, and we'll teach you. And, and you just figure out for yourself, that's what we want you to do, whether or not this makes sense. And if we can give you things that can help you, and you don't even need to come, that's great. Glad to do it. So, okay. Feels good saving lives, giving life. All right. Bye. Heather, I think you can.